Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's Accounting and Financial Statement Integration Module. My name is Hamilton Lin and I will be walking you through this presentation. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced without the express written approval and consent In this particular of the course. Training. We want to make sure that there are several learning objectives that you understand. The first learning objective is to make sure that you have a solid understanding and grasp of the financial statements and understanding of these basic core financials. We also want to make sure you understand how financial statements are integrated and interrelated to each other, and we want to become familiar with the basic ratios. We will wrap this up with an exercise where we'll actually look at the uh, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow of several different companies and compare and contrast the two. Let us now, before we begin, go through a brief, quick refresher on the major financial statements. On the first hand, we have our income statement. The income statement starts off with revenue, as well as expenses. When you take revenue minus expenses, you have a generic term that we will call profit. We will expand into the specifics, into specific line items shortly. On the balance sheet, we have a statement of our assets. On the one hand, we have assets, which is a statement of all of the different things that we own, and that must always equal the liabilities, things that we owe, plus the equity, which effectively reflects our ownership. When we look at it from this perspective, folks, keep this in mind. The great thing about finances, it's not rocket science. We just like to pretend it is to justify our high pay. How is that the case? Because when you look at the definition of any term, it's very straightforward. An income statement is simply a statement of income. The balance sheet is simply a sheet that balances. Okay, perhaps that doesn't tell us too much information there, but one key critical component, folks, is this. The assets must equal the liabilities plus the equity. Think about that for a second. You don't know how many financial models I receive when doing transactions from the other party, whether it's the other investment banker or whether it's the, the other uh, side of the transaction. And the first thing I look at when I look at the financial model is, does the balance sheet balance? And folks, you do not believe the amount, the percentage of models I receive in which the balance sheet does not actually balance. And at this point, do I laugh or do I cry? Do I laugh because, ha, I have better information because my model is balanced and yours don't? Or do I cry because now I have to go back and figure out why yours doesn't balance? Key critical thing here is a balance sheet must balance. The assets must always equal the liability plus the equity. Let's now look at the cash flow statement. In the cash flow statement, we will have the following. We have cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing activities, all to get us our change in cash. Now, folks, let's take a look at this. Why do we care about these numbers? Fundamentally, at the end of the day, we want to have as much revenue, cut down as much cost as we can to eventually get to our profit number. Now, folks, where do we get the ability to generate our revenues? Fundamentally, we want to have our assets, which will be used to ideally increase and fund and generate our future revenue. For, at the end of the day, at the fundamental aspect of this, you look and you say, well, how am I going to fund the acquisition of these assets? You will fund the acquisition of these assets through the use of liabilities and equity. Liabilities you can consider as debt. Now, folks, keep this in mind. When you look at this, you want to make sure that you are not going to confuse this accounting term with finance. The accountants will classify all liabilities and equity as debt. Again, the accountants will classify their definition of debt as all liabilities. They will classify as all liabilities, whereas from the finance perspective, for we look at debt, we only want to look at what I will call interest-bearing negotiated securities. Keep that in mind for the future. Again, interest-bearing negotiated securities, not all liabilities. So keep that in mind. Now, these liabilities and equity will fund our assets, which again, will now in turn fund our future revenue or generate our future revenue to get down to our profit at the end of the day. What do we do with this profit? We reinvest it back into the business via the equity, via the ownership, which again, help to then further fund future assets, et cetera, and whatnot. And at the end of the day, why do we need the cash flow statement? The cash flow statement is different from the income statement and the balance sheet. The income statement and the balance sheet all are governed by US GAAP. Well, so is the cash flow statement, but at the end of the day, you can distort and you can modify your revenue, your expenses, your profit, your assets, liability, and equity. But the one thing you cannot modify is your cash. Hence the term cash is king. Cash is king, which simply means you cannot, dis uh, you cannot disguise or distort the actual cash you have on the books. You either have the cash or you don't. So from that perspective, the cash statement is what we always call the great equalizer. This you cannot hide. 